Hey, what's up? This is Severman. So since the feedback on my production tutorial on In Memories was pretty good, I considered to keep making these videos. And for today, I decided to show you the project file of my track I Go Crazy, which was just released before In Memories, I think at the end of March on Spur Records. And for those who don't know what the track sounds like, just listen. Alright, so here we got the FLP. Let's start with the breakdown. I go crazy when you touch me. Crazy. I go crazy the way you love me. Crazy. Okay, so the break is built around that one vocal which I got from Splice and solely and without the processing it sounds like that. I go crazy when you touch me. Crazy. So what I did was I pitched it down by one semitone. I go crazy when you touch me. Just to make it suit the key of my track and then I adjusted the BPM accordingly to my track which is 128 which is the standard BPM for progressive files. Then for the processing, okay, I first did some EQing, um, then what I have on basically almost every channel, the low and the high cut. Then after the EQing I added this delay just to fill the vocal out a bit more because the vocal is just that one file here and to make it a bit fatter if that makes sense, I added this delay and it also fills up the gaps a bit. So as you can see, you have some gaps in here and the delay helps filling those out. So if I play it without the delay, it sounds like that. I go crazy when you touch me. Crazy. And then with the delay on, it sounds like that. I go crazy when you touch me. No, it's not a crazy effect, but that's a bit to it. Then I use this compressor. With the compressor, you can reduce your dynamic range. And especially with vocals, it's, it's crucial to compress them because otherwise it will, be, it will be too hard to mix them down. And yeah, after the compressor, we got reverb also to fill out those gaps a bit more and just makes it a bit fatter, if that makes sense. I go crazy when you touch me. Crazy. Then I used this patcher right here with the Fruity Maximus and the balance. And what I did here is I basically just saturated the vocals. And then we got Kickstart for Sidechain, which is only active on a drop. And then this Fruity Gross Beat is only active before the second drop. I will come later to that. Again, uh, then I added this second layer to it, which is basically just a clone of the actual vocal layer. So they're both actually the same, but what I did with the second one, I rooted it to another channel, to this one. And here I used the stereo enhancer to basically put it on the sides. And this way I gave it an additional layer to add some width to the vocal. Because again, I just had that one vocal layer. Then we got this bass line here in the back. For this one I use these two layers. This one is from Spire and then this one from Silent One. And these are literally just detuned super sauce with a low pass filter on it. So you only have those lows. And so it's really nothing special with these. Then we have this piano playing in the break. So as you can see, I actually use the FL keys in this case. I actually don't use it a lot, but I use it in this track. For the processing, we have some EQing where I boosted the higher mids a bit and the low and the high cut. And this filter is for automation. As you can see, I use a low pass filter and it's slowly opening up. Then we have the sidechain here for the drop and 
What I like to add is a fruity balance for volume automation uh, because I don't like to automate my faders because if I automate them and I want to adjust the volume, I would need to adjust all points in my automation. So what I do is I always add an additional fruity balance and then just automate it in the plugin there. Then I added this organ as well. So this one comes from Citrus Citrus. I have no clue how to pronounce it. It's from FL Studio. Uh, here for the processing, uh, we have some EQing again, the low and the high cut, and the sidechain for the drop, and again, the fruity balance, which I just explained on the piano. So it has the same purpose here. Then here we got a string. I, with this one I widen it up a bit to yeah, put it on the side and to have it a bit more apart from my vocal because since the vocal is playing like pretty centered in the mix I wanted to separate the strings by widening them up a bit. And then we got a fruity reverb, nothing special here. Another filter for the automation, I used also your low pass filter which is opening up in the break. Again the sidechain and the fruity balance. Okay then I added some sort of voice sounds to it. They sound like that. They basically just stay on that one note and I think they add a bit of emotion to it. And I also with these use just the low pass filter and it's opening up during the break. I go crazy when you touch me. Crazy. I go crazy the way you love me Crazy I go crazy when you touch me Crazy I go crazy the way you love me Crazy Then in the next section of the break I added these drums to it Nothing special here, just the kick drum from the cashmere pack, I think, and some stadium claps. Then also I'm introducing the leads in the break. And then to fill it up, I added some effect sounds to it. And then we're already at the build up. So in the build-up we have these drums right here. Then the effect sounds again. Some more risers or uplifters. And then we got obviously the rest from the break and the leads which are opening up even more. And we got this arm which I use in the drop that I also introduce in the build up. I feel like this arm also helps making it a bit more emotional but it also kind of speeds it up if that makes sense. So it adds some energy already to it.
Okay, so there we are, we're at the drop. Uh, let me start with the drums this time. So this is the kick drum, this is from the cashmere pack. Let's see how I process this one. Got some EQing, what I did, I boosted the 233 Hz area a bit and reduced the highs to make it less clicky in this case. And we got some claps and rights and stuff. Then with the effect sounds, sounds like that. Often when I listen to tracks by other upcoming producers, I feel like there's missing something and often it's about these effect sounds because this is something which is easily overlooked, I would say, because they're not like too obvious. And um, so make sure you go use a lot of effect zones because they help really finish up your job and glue everything together. And they also add some high end to your track and they really just make it sound finished. This is the baseline in the drop. So what I usually do when it comes to bass lines, and that's also what I already explained in my last tutorial on in memories, I divide them up into the sub bass and into the mid basses. And for the sub bass, I use the 3x oscillator from FL Studio, and the sub bass sounds like this. These are basically just two sine waves and the other one is just an octave higher than the other one. Yeah, for the processing there wasn't much to do, I only cut away the high frequencies. Well, there weren't really any high frequencies, but I still cut them away, uh, just to be sure. This is the sidechain for the sub bass. So one tip when you sidechain your sub bass, try to draw in the inverted slope of your kick drum and that will work pretty well. So what I mean by that is if you take a look at the kick drum I had in this track, it basically just plays in the first half between every kick. So what I mean is here you have the kick drum playing and then in that second half there's no kick drum playing. So when you check out the side chain on the sub, you basically have the inverted way of that. So in the first half between each kick there is no sub because that's why the line is down. And slowly as it comes to kind of the second half, it goes up. And then in the second half, you have the side, uh, the sub bass playing. And then again, it's ducking, going up again. So it's kind of the inverted slope of a kick drum. That works pretty well. Okay, let's take a closer look at the mid basses. I use these three layers. This one is from Spire, then Nexus and Silent One. As you can see, they're all rooted to another channel. So they, have, they all have their own channel. But what I do is I root them all to the same channel. So I basically create a bus channel, which allows me to process them all at once. So I don't need to add the same EQ to all three channels, if that makes sense. Then here again, we have some EQing, some more EQing. Then I use this deep blue tape stop effect to yeah, create the tape stop effect in the drop. So that basically makes it like at the end. <laughs> then again, the low and the high cut. The low cut here is really important to give the sub bass room. And then I use the peak control and the reverb. I explained this technique in my last video. So if you want to know how I did that, make sure to check that out. It's linked at the top. And then filter for automation. Then the sidechain, it's pretty similar to the sidechain of the sub bass, but it's not as hard. And then I added some fruity balance plugins for volume automation. And I also use pianos in the drop. In the break, I only used one piano, the FL Keys from FL Studio. Then in the drop, I layered a second one to it. And what else I did was I chopped up the chords to make it fit to the rhythm of the melody.
Second one is from True Pianos. And what I did here, I only rolled off the lows. Then we got some more chords. As you can see, these consist of these four layers. This one is just a saw preset I made in Signed 1. On its own, it sounds like that. And then we have the organ from the breakdown. This kind of sound here. And then I used some sort of vocal sample that also played the chords. And for processing, this time I actually don't have them all going to the same channel. What I did with the saw chords, I rooted them to the channel of my mid basses, so they basically have the same effects as the mid basses. Then the organ has its own channel, and for these two sounds, I again used some EQing, low and high cut, you know it already. I widened them up a bit. Then again, we have the P controller and the reverb, some delay, another filter for automation i think yeah low pass filter and the side chain and a balance for volume automation okay now we come to the leads what's special about them is i implemented some sort of stops and i think these stops make the drop really stand out and this is how the leads sound individually Um, for the processing of these, again, some EQing, another EQ, low and high cut, sausage fattener to just boost the volume a bit, stereo enhancer for automation actually, and then uh, the filter, which I use for the automation here as well, some side chaining, kickstart, and the gross beat, which I used to make the top kick pop out more, and fruity balance for volume automation. If you're wondering how I made these stops, I basically use the volume automation for that as well. This is the automation right here, so if you pay attention to the yeah to the stops. It kind of chops it up a bit and it makes it a bit powerful on each note. And again, we got these sounds that I used in the break as well. These voice sounds and the ARP. So as you can hear, they're not actually very loud, not that upfront. They're really just in the background helping to fill it up a tiny bit more, giving it some atmosphere and adding a bit of emotion to it. Then in the second half of the drop, I added more drums to it, more shakers, more rides and claps to kind of keep the flow going. Then I also added another piano, which plays these notes. It's also just a sound which is in the background and adds just a little bit to it. Uh, we have a stereo enhancer to widen it up a bit as well. A reverb, which really adds that atmosphere to it. Some EQing here, I reduced the body a bit. Again, low and high cut and then the side chain again for the drop. And then the rest is just the same, besides these uplifters which I have in the build up and I also added them at the end of the drop.
so after the drop, the track kind of breaks down, it loses all the energy, and from that it builds up again to the second drop. Yeah, but to show you the second break, yeah, I used longer chords this time. They're all lasting two bars. As you can see here, I also I also close down the low pass filter and I open it up throughout the break. And yeah, also as you can tell, the sounds are the same from the first break. So I just changed up the chords to keep it interesting. And then I added this reverse vocal sweep. So how I did this, I basically chopped off this first snippet of the vocal. I don't, I and I reversed this one and basically put a lot of reverb on it and exported it, dragged it into the project again and reversed it again. And what you end up with is this reversed sweep, which really helps transition into the vocal again. I go crazy. I go crazy when you touch me. Crazy. I go crazy the way you love me. Crazy. I go crazy when you touch me. Crazy. I go crazy the way you love me. Crazy. What I did then, I layered the kick drum underneath the track. It's the same kick I used in the first break, but this time I'm using the fall to the floor rhythm. And this way I'm just like making it flow again. And then later I'm using the shorter chords again from the rest of the track, like I used in the drop and in the first break. And I also added a new piano to it to add something to it and to keep it interesting. And then the rest of the track is all the same again, introducing the leads again, using the chords, the organ strings and stuff, the other piano, the bass line that I used in the first break, also the effect sounds are the same. Then what I did in the second build up, I kept the bass line on that one same note because I felt like it creates more tension and it also helped keeping the track interesting in my opinion. So I'm pitching the bass line up here and fading it out with the basic volume automation. Yeah, again, and the rest is the same from the first break. And then we're already at the second drop. What I did in the second drop, I actually kept out the kick drum in the first bar, because again, I felt like it added something new to the track, which I haven't had yet in the track. I go crazy when you touch me. Yeah, what I did, I removed the sidechain as well because yeah, there was no kick. Yeah, but after the first bar, I'm dropping in the sidechain again and the kick drum. And I actually also used the vocal before the second drop. That's something I did not in the first build up or in the, in the first before the first drop. Uh, what I did with the vocal here, I added the gross beat, which I already showed you in the beginning. So this is uh, the slow down gate preset here. I automated the yeah, the volume knob or the mix knob. And then what I'm doing here, I'm basically turning it up so it creates this gated effect sort of I don't know how to explain just listen Me. Me. 
Yeah, again, the rest is the same as in the first drop. In the second half of the drop, I introduced the additional drums and the additional sounds again. The only thing I did was I added this sort of outro part to it to kind of help fade the track out. And I think it just creates a nice ending. <laughs> If you would like to have the sounds that I use in this track, make sure to go check out the second link in the description because I created a little sample pack with the sounds that I created in this track. And that's it. I hope you liked it. Let me know in the comments which track you would like me to explain in the future. And if it helped you, if you got inspired for your own production, make sure to drop me a like and uh, see you next time. Bye.